Hey everybody. Hope you're doing well. Um, I felt the need to share with you guys a download that I received um, in April after one of my friend's deaths previously before he died about a month before he died I was receiving communication with the spirit and I didn't realize that I was receiving communication with the spirit until literally the month before he died before that I was getting the communication but I didn't know who this communication was coming from but anyway after he died that spirit that was helping me process my emotions with him um, was then also working with his spirit to help me finish out understanding this whole concept that I'm about to explain. So they wanted to show me in all these different ways how we take on people's energy because it's such a hard concept to fortify in our brains, right? Like we can understand it and then we can understand it on a different level, but then we sometimes forget what we had understood previously and have to keep repeating this fucking loop and doubting yourself over and over again, right? The first spirit wanted me to dig into the Medusa. It says to me, if you think of Medusa, who has snakes on her head, which scared people so bad that they turned to stone, Medusa inevitably thought that she was bad and hid herself because she didn't want people to hurt anymore. I was shown a vision after I asked, who am I, of a little girl with glasses and pigtails. I seen the little girl. I then asked, well, who are you? Someone else appeared who had, she had like a crown on her head that had horns, like that, right? She appeared, also felt her energy, and it felt strong. She was so freaking beautiful, and you could tell she was just fierce and ferocious, that she was going to stand up and fight for everything that she thought needed fought for. Um, and this lady replied to me, that is you, who is also me. And at that moment, huge, and I mean huge, I mean like blinding huge light rays started just piercing from her eyes, from her head, like her whole body was just light beams coming out of it. And from her finger, from her fingertips, from her heart space, she just illuminated every tiny little speck of space for as long and as wide as anyone looking could conceive. Because this light was so damn bright, she made people mad because she was hurting their eyes. They had no choice but to see all the darkness, to see all that the darkness had once covered. And they could no longer be blind to that dark space that they had once been in. They had to become aware of the light. This woman is not bad. This light is just a part of her. Like the feet are a part of your body, you wouldn't get mad at anybody for simply using their feet and walking away. This lady speaks again and says, Tara, this is who we are. But your light 
has been hidden for so long because people kept putting their darkness onto you making you believe that it was your own which made you forget who that little girl was remember who you are and start embodying the star people go about their entire lives unaware of transference other people's strings that make them the person that they are a whole person strings of people get caught on to us and our strings on them and vice versa when we are unaware of releasing this formation transmutation of these things we inevitably take on the essence of them and they take on our essence water changes its form its actual shape depending on what kind of objects it comes into contact with its memory our bodies are made up of 70 i think percent of water so what does that mean that our actual physical bodies would be able to change shape depending upon the people and places and spaces and frequencies that we are surrounding ourselves with it's a different vibrations making up different things so it's depending on your vibration how your actual body will be presenting in form have you ever heard of liquid crystallization this is why we have to be extremely freaking careful with who we're surrounding ourselves with who um we can make a co contact with what things we're touching what things we're putting into our body what things we're drinking what things we're wearing you know that clothes literally affect your body in ways that you wouldn't even imagine the the thing the material that makes these clothes up gets stuck in your body in your skin and literally live on you and affect your skin in the whole like you you take on a piece of material you see you see these things all over me this is what this is this is the spirit world manifesting in a way that you cannot ignore any longer that's what this is all this is why everything's happening in the way that it's happening we're not allowed to ignore these things anymore we have to wake up because if we do not we will lose ourselves completely this energy that's oscillating makes different things depending upon these strings that make up that energy okay some people and things vibrate at such a low frequency or even just a drastic difference from our own core makeup of strings that when we were born or created that it in a sense makes our regular program end up malfunctioning water reflects but literally can actually reflect an image of something that it it was shown 30 seconds before it got frozen once it gets to the freezing point it reflects the image it was shown the warmest kindest soul that somebody rips apart our heart and stomps on it and we freeze we're gonna start reflecting their behaviors onto them form a grid pattern to form a bigger string of energy 
and that bigger string also does this and makes up tiny strings of itself and then gets worked with that string even bigger and bigger and so on. These strings that make up just one person can also, in fact, be at the very same time the same strings that make up the entire universe along with other people. In this sense, we are all one string doing a different part to form the planet, the world, the universe, etc. All things are connected, some small, some big, all just as important because without the one, there wouldn't be the other, no matter how good or bad that one might be. I've been, I've, okay, so this all was a lesson for me because I was seeing myself shed these strings, these cords, these attachments for the, um, the last two years in my head visibly. Like I've seen it, and even though these strings can't really be seen by people, they can be once you reach a certain vibration where you can see all lower vibrations. And then you can also see everything that's on that same vibration as well. I actually see myself pulling out these strings that aren't supposed to be on me. That don't make up my original essence. I was taking those strings off, okay? Because if you think about it this way, I'm sitting in this chair right now. So this chair is now a part of me. It is now, when I get up from this chair, I'm going to have remnants of that chair's energy makeup on my body. And because I don't take it off of my body or release it, it's gonna be on my body. And it will remain on my body until I release them, okay? So these, this, these two spirits then, were able to allow my brain to really conceptualize it so that I didn't continue doubting myself over and over again. But my spirit team was actually coming in and basically almost pulling the strings for me with my own hands so that I could see what the fuck was going on, right? And so that I could become more of my own essence in order to do my soul's work. And it says, isn't the universe amazing in the ways that it shows up and acts for us to heal and get back to our original blueprint, our core being, our true self, our power? So skin in the real world sense starts to die when it doesn't get enough moisture. In the spiritual sense, we start to die when all of our strings are leaving us. All of our strings that make up our original energy leave us because you're giving this person the confidence boost that they need without receiving any love or attention from them. So your strings are all leaving you while you're also taking on all of their trauma and all of their crap because you're not releasing them, right? So all of our strings are leaving us and we aren't getting anything back to keep us remaining as an energy. So So essentially, we give out all of our strings that make up who we are as a person. Tara, my myself as Tara, myself as Tara has these cords, these strings that make cords that make the bigger Tara, the body of Tara, right? 
but when I give out all of my strings to people so that they can feel love and they can feel special and they can feel good about themselves, but yet I'm not releasing their core, I can still be alive, but no longer myself. I'm essentially the makeup, I'm made up of them and them and them and them because I gave out my power, I gave out my strings to my birth parents and I gave out my strings to my adopted parents and I gave out my strings to the fucking eight boyfriends that I've had, you know what I mean? Like, every time you're giving out love and attention, you're giving away your strings. But you're in that relationship, you're connected to that person, so you're also becoming made up of their strings. You lose your own strings completely and just become them. You're no longer you. So you're here, you're, you're a physical being on this earth, but you're no longer you. You're something else. You're made up of many different things that are not you at all. You died. You, as you, the one that was created, the one that was born, the one that was birthed in the beginning, is no longer that. It's all these other things, all this other crap, all this other trauma, all this other turmoil. turmoil. So, what are we doing? Like, how do we get us back? We start releasing them. We say, I love my birth parents. I can understand the mistakes they made because they were taking on energy that was not themselves. But I don't have to keep them on me anymore. And I don't have to let them keep my love anymore. But when you remove that attachment to them they don't have the strings that you gave them to help make them up as a person until you have embodied your full power your full true essence and are being able to give them love not to be able to receive love back but to love them because they deserve love when you love them because they deserve love, when you love them because you recognize yourself in them, that's when you can help them go and retrieve the pieces of their own being back to them and help them release the strings that they are not supposed to be holding on to. Our strings are our... <laughs> On tonic, I said, to the higher realms, our home. And when our strings get clogged, when we lose touch with our body as a whole and with our powers and our ability to get, we lose our ability to get home and back safely. So we lose our ability to connect with the higher realms, to astral travel, to do the soul work that we're here to do. one part of the world needs to evolve or shift vibrations the universe the knowing of all things together in one knowing we need every piece to make the whole will position certain people vibrations at the same or just a little bit higher frequencies at or around the same area. We position ourselves in a grid pattern in order to have an effect on all of the other strings in the middle and outer parts of the grid. Kind of in a grid like this. And it just keeps going like this. And then they have ripple effects and then the ripple affects the whole so if one of those strings get bent or broken it affects the whole uh, the whole as a one so if we are healed so is the other there's no judgments or projections there's only love oh we're really trying to affect the people in the middle it also kind of affects the people on the edge, the people on the outer, right? 
So this person, say it's my first husband I met. He's standing here and maybe he's operating about the same frequency as I am. So the universe makes us split up and then positions us at different opposite ends of the town, okay? And his energy field is going out that way, going out this way, going out that way, going out that way. Do you see what it is? Basically a tiny, a bunch of X's. But those X's at the same frequency as another X gets bigger and bigger. And then it's, there's another one and another one. And you see? We essentially heal each other being in that relationship. The universe makes us split up so that we then can affect other people and help them ascend and heal themselves. But if we refuse to break up, we stay in that relationship longer, we end up damaging each other further, leading us to go over these loops and do these cycles over and over and over again. And that just creates more trauma that we have to continuously heal. But if you healed, you don't have to take on the wounding of others. You only have to take on the positivity if you choose. But if we aren't healed, we're affecting them in ways that will break them. But even when you are hurting people, you are inevitably healing. You're healing them through the pain you're inflicting. That healing just takes longer. Two healed people working together can affect great change, and so can two plus one. Mirrors reflect who you are, but if you don't know who you are, you don't know that that mirror is always a little off. It's only a reflection of who you are. Molam bati ki baat ko na pas ti no skinama. So now that we discuss the archetypes being Mother Gaia and how that can show up, now we will discuss star seeds and how they will. Mirrors reflect a projection of you. Stars. I think what if babies consist of not only cell DNA, but energy DNA. So whatever energy you were holding in the time that you conceived, or even in the time that you gave birth, or even a combining of the time that you conceived and the time that you gave birth. So depending on the people that you're around during those times, or the people that are in your space, or even the spaces that you allow yourself to be in, you're taking on those energies and therefore when you are pregnant your baby also takes those on seeds people who aren't from earth but are actually from the sky superheroes not from mother Gaia which are archetypes like Lilith Lilith being the light that shines so that you can see in the mirror. Okay, so when you conceive your child, and perhaps maybe when you give birth, whatever energy that you are carrying and surrounding yourself with in that time is karma, right? So when I was little, Something in my family triggered me to have an ego death, which meant my mirror power was used against me to reflect the opposite of me. Somebody stole my mirror and started rejecting or projecting their darkness onto me. So I was holding that darkness and 
spreading that darkness unknowingly because people kept seeing this projection that I wasn't and thinking I was something that I wasn't and they would then in turn keep hurting me which only further left me in more ego deaths which eventually there was nothing left and I became a pure vessel of whatever at that point you have to have a soul review and at that soul review you have to decide are you going to work for the good or are you going to work for the evil are you going to help people through love or are you going to help people through pain now at this point I think is when this happens with your children so when both parents have already had so many ego deaths that they had their final like soul review and they had to make that final decision good or bad if one of them is working for good and one of them is working for bad their children then show the karma that needs healed. So for instance, my first child with my first husband took on the archetype Lilith's um, projection of others, which was darkness. I was reflecting a projection of Miranda. She had been sent to her soul review at some point in her life because of her trauma from her parents. And she then hated me because I was still carrying that light that she had been had that had been stolen from her. And so she, who was originally Medusa, scared people off and turned them into stone because of the snakes on her head, then becomes the projection of them, which is a narcissist. Even though that's not how she's actually showing up, that's just how they're seeing her. And now they hate her. So she lost touch of her inner self, her inner child, her little girl with pigtails and glasses. And the light of that archetype, which is, Med which is um, Medusa, Lilith, the people that shine that light on the darkness, was then also turned against me and she then stole my mirror to get her mirror back so that she could project her darkness and all of the darkness that she accumulated along her path onto me. So then I started spreading that unknowingly because I didn't know that I was reflecting this because I wasn't aware of this and even though this wasn't who I was and it wasn't the actions that I was taking it made me appear to others as dark and so they continuously would treat me bad thinking that I was dark even though I wasn't acting dark and didn't no, I was appearing dark. I created Brianna. Who wants nothing to do with me because of the way that people see me and the way that I appear. Kaylee is a superwoman who uses her rope to draw in the truth which was just be, be 
Because you have confidence doesn't mean you lack virtue. During my pregnancy with Kaylee, the truth was drawn in and I had to eventually heal that. With Jackson, the energy was blood-sucking vampires, and now he carries the energy of Batman, the bat who has sonar powers and can hear frequencies that the normal ear can't hear. Jackson as Batman illuminates all that is hidden. You begin to lose completely all faith and hope in humanity. And Liam is Spider-Man, flinging his spider webs for good and for evil. And the latest is my Emmy bug and She, with the others, we were both vessels at this point because we both had our ego deaths. I'm a vessel of spirit. She's a vessel of spirit. One for evil. One for good. One for love. One for evil. Two vessels of spirit, no matter good or bad, holding space as a bridge for other people to cross into new earth if they so choose to do the work. One eight on the clock. It comes down to a number eight. Twenty one is twenty two. Twenty two being a master number. Two. If you're going Disney into Plus eight. is going to be following mm -hmm. in Netflix footsteps and his plans to eliminate Actually being able to equal down to a two. Just a few tunes. And now beach weather. Calling off the wallflowers I know Out the dark Into the light you, you, you're done. You, 
are at that end of the cycle. Both sides, both the the side that is choosing to stay in gluttony and fear, shame. The people who um, don't want to change because they enjoy their lifestyle or they don't want to change because because they're scared but there's it's it's not even that they're not getting you know a fair chance it's they're so scared because they've allowed themselves to sink and sink and sink and sink and never had the strength to stand back up um it's like it's time now new earth is here the worlds have split <clears throat> Those who have chosen the higher unconditional love path will now be on an entirely different planet than those that refused. And for the ones who chose that other earth stop stop your stop your begging like you made your decision you can't continuously make the same mistakes over and over again saying every time that you never put into in in the work you never put in the work of trying not to make that mistake again And those of you who had put the work in, those of you who had looked inside themselves continuously whenever there could have possibly been any way possible that you were coming into the situation in a lower version of yourself, you guys are in your error of godliness not godliness in a way of you're polite and you're kind and you're sweet it, it, it's um your godliness in your roar that person who everybody is not only excited to see um praising or um bowing down to or at least feeling as though they need to bow down to because they um treasure that person but you're also gonna be the person who people are afraid of and they cower to